been seeing a lot of flooding lately, right? Just five short weekends ago, Hurricane Harvey hit and devastated our community. I know that uh, Josh already asked this, but if you don't mind me asking, how many of you maybe were flooded or know someone personally that was? Everyone in this room, right? I know things are still pretty raw around here, and I can actually relate to that. Um, during Harvey, my mom lost everything, so she's been staying with us, and a lot of our friends, we've been trying to help them recover as well. But before that, we grew up along the Gulf Coast, and in 2005, Hurricane Rita hit our, our hometown, and we lost everything. And then just as we were moving back in, in 2008, in Hurricane Ike, um, a 10-foot storm surge hit and completely washed out my hometown again. And so Ike was particularly scary for me because my dad wasn't able to evacuate, and he had to climb up into the attic to escape that 10-foot storm surge that just went straight through our, our home. So even though we lost um, possessions, photos, childhood memories, I still counted us as fortunate because we all made it out alive. And then a few years later, I went to, this is my hometown, over 95% of the structures were, were uninhabitable. So the entire community was gone. And then a few years later, I went to Haiti after the earthquake to help clean up rubble. But while we were there, there was this devastating flash flood event that happened, and there was no warning about it on the ground. And so a lot of the tent communities that we visited were completely devastated, and cholera spread in record numbers. And so these events had a really profound effect on me, and it led me to want to study this as my life mission. So I became a civil engineer in the field of hydrology, and as a civil engineer, we get to study flood models and then design drainage infrastructure to mitigate for those floods up to a certain risk level. For example, the National Floodplain Boundary is based on a 100-year storm. Now, this doesn't mean that we won't have another one of these storms for 100 years. It's really a 1 in 100 chance of getting that amount of rainfall in any given year, irrespective of past or future storms. So when Hurricane Harvey hit, this was completely off the charts of our statistical probability. Hurricane Harvey dumped about 50 inches of rainfall in just four days, which is about a year's worth of rainfall for the Gulf Coast region. So in that type of event, flooding is to be expected. And during such a large catastrophe, I was expecting to see people with just sheer and utter panic. And this was kind of a stressful time in our nation and community. It, it felt like things were on the verge of fracturing, but instead, People just stopped what they were doing and came together. People from all walks of life helped shelter each other, rebuild, sustain each other, and just bring general hope. And a lot of this had to do with the power of social media. So social media has been used in the past to completely revolutionize the humanitarian industry. A prime example of this is after the Haiti earthquake, which happened in 2010. And this was around the time where smart technology and mobile phones really started spreading around the world. And when the earthquake hit, less than 50% of the country was mapped at all. So aid agencies, they didn't know where to send the resources. So what happened was this massive crowdsourcing effort where people could send in their texts and their tweets and their photographs. And this information was... Uh, the most comprehensive crisis map available was created with this information. And this wasn't done by government or private institution. This was just the power of the people banding together and sharing what they knew to meet a common need. And you guys actually did this too after Harvey. There are a lot of crowdsourcing platforms that popped up after the storm where people were able to ping whether or not their streets were flooded, which this is really useful to first responders or they could send in information about where they needed supplies sent, or if shelters had capacity. And this was really useful to aid agencies. But the thing is, a lot of people maybe didn't know that these platforms existed. So as the Times recently published, people kind of turned to Twitter and Facebook as de facto emergency hotlines. Hurricane Harvey became the first social media storm in the United States. 
And I can attest to this because going through hurricanes in 2005 and 2008 compared to now, there was a world of difference with how we responded to these storms as a community. I saw post after post after post of people saying they needed rescued or their family members needed rescued off of countertops and tabletops. And people would share and within hours, these people were actually getting rescued. My husband and I even used a social media app called Zello to get in touch with the Cajun Navy, and we were able to help out with their relief efforts. And this is a form of crowdsourcing because people would send in the address where they needed rescuing, and then these maps were updated in real time and sent to the rescue boats. So can you imagine maybe the results we might have had with all of these people stranded if we didn't have this type of technology? So yes, social media and crowdsourcing has been used to respond to natural disasters. But I want to propose another challenge. What if we could use the same principle and technology instead to help predict the flood before it occurs? So how, how might we do that, you'll ask? Well, as a flood water engineer, the most important thing to our models is widespread and accurate data. So typically what we'll do is we'll collect a, different, a lot of different data sets from satellite imagery or from survey information, such as how much vegetation we have and what the elevation of the land is. And then we can create predictive models. Now, even with the best math and the best data, these are still based on mathematical theories. So what we have to do is we have to calibrate our models with the known ground truth information. So you may have driven over bridges and seen these stream gauges as you're going over. And this tells us how high the water actually got in a given magnitude rain event. And we're able to calibrate at that known point, and then it helps us update the parameters throughout the rest of the watershed. And this works where we have stream gauges. But in rural areas like my hometown or in Haiti, these stream gauges might be spread out over many miles, or they might not exist at all. So in those instances, what we'll do as scientists is we'll take photographs right after the storm of the high water mark. And then we're able to use that instead to calibrate our model at a specific point. And there are institutions that are starting to partner with the general public to crowdsource that type of information. Did you know that right now, the National Weather Service actually analyzes your Twitter feeds, the ones that are made public? So if you post something with, with hashtag flood or hashtag Harvey, there's a very real chance that someone's looking at these photos and comparing it to their prediction models. And there have been examples where the models showed something slightly different, and they're able to update them with your information. And then this just makes the models that much more accurate for the next storm. And there are other ways that we crowdsource hydrology. If you just really want to get gung-ho and excited about science, you can buy one of these weather stations and put them on your roof. And this information is sent out to the Weather Underground app, which is a really popular smart from weather application. And people from all over can zoom in and look at what w the weather is happening on your own roof. And this is also sent to the National Weather Service meteorologists. And they use this to complement their precipitation gauge data. And then they update their forecast with it, and they disseminate that out to all of us. So there is still a ways to go before we can really streamline this type of data collection effort. But the more involvement that we have from the general public, the better chances we have of saving lives together. So after Hurricane Harvey hit, approximately 1 in 10 homes in Houston were flooded. But far more than 1 in 10 people are part of the solution. So I want to encourage you to really start understanding hydrology in your backyard and then sharing that data that you know and then being involved in disaster response at a grassroots level. Thank you.